So now let's talk about our first case. Our first case is that of a young age male, 33 year old male. And uh, I still remember the patient came to us with vague abdominal pain, nothing else. The examination findings were not very conclusive. The patient was ha not having any guarding or rigidity. The only complaint patient was having was pain abdomen and occasional vomiting. And lab investigations revealed anemia. Now this anemia is one of the very consistent findings that you would find with small bubble disorders. They can be seen in allucicle tuberculosis, it could be seen in ulcerative colitis, you can see that in inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and you can also get them with malabsorption syndrome like celiac disease. So if you have a combination of pain, abdomen and vomiting along with anemia, there is always a high suspicion of something gone wrong with the bowel. So this is what we got. So this is a high frequency ultrasound image and you can see that there is classical bowel wall thickening and this bowel appears significantly thickened but to a great extent we see that the inner layer of bowels were relatively looking like spared and predominantly it is the outer layer and the middle layer of the bowel which appear to be thickened. When we put color Doppler in you can see there is no significant vascularity in the bowel wall but one thing is for sure that we are dealing with abnormal bowel wall thickening. And this is typically involving which area of bowel? It is involving the small bowel. So what do we do next? In cases with suspected small bowel thickening, the first investigation that we do is a CT andrography. So I do have the CT andrography image of this patient. I just wanted to have a look at it. So this is the same patient coming with same complaints. And what we see on CT andrography, the area of the bowel which was thickened was the terminal ileum and the IC junction. So looking at this particular CT, what are the important observations that you can make? I'll just jot down one by one. There is abnormal bowel wall Thickening, number one. Then, talking about the characteristics of bowel thickening, is it looking symmetric or asymmetric? It is looking symmetric. You see that both the areas, not only the mesentric, but the anti-mesentric segment of the bowel is equally inward. So, since mesentery is lying here, so this is the mesentric aspect of the small bowel, that is the terminal ileum, and this is the anti-mesentric aspect. So, we have a concentric bowel wall thickening. Then, next thing, is it enhancing or not? If I just enlarge the image, I think now you can clearly pick that this is an enhancing bowel wall thickening and the enhancement is typically seen most prominent in the region of the inner layer or the mucosal layer. So we have a layered pattern of enhancement. Then next thing is, what do we see adjoining the thickened bowel? So do we see any significant lymphadenopathy? No. Do we see any significant mesentric fat stranding? Very subjective, some mesentric fat stranding can be seen here and there, but largely there is no stranding. So, mesentric changes are minimal. Mesentric changes are minimal. Then, do we see any luminal compromise? Do we see any signs of bubble obstruction? No luminal compromise, no bubble obstruction. We don't see any ascites. We don't see any necrotic lymph nodes. So, what is your diagnosis now? The thing that we gave in our diagnosis was Crohn's. And the reason why we gave it is because we could see normal c -cup, normal ascending colon. So, the biopsy of this lesion was performed. The colonoscopy of this lesion was also done. And it came out to be Crohn's only. But there was something else which was hidden behind in this particular case, which I want you to have a better look at. So, this is the most important image of the same patient which helped us in making the diagnosis. Now, what do we see? I just want you to have a look at this particular pathology. I hope everybody of you would be able to see the abnormally thickened bowel wall. I want you to tell me why is it Crohn's and why is it not tuberculosis? What is the single most important thing which is in favor of Crohn's rather than TB? So, the important pathology is this small outpouching which can be seen from the bowel wall and this is typically present where it is present on the NT mesenteric border. So, what is this thing? We've talked about this thing before. You can see that this is not showing any typical walls like small bubbles. So, it is probably nothing but a pseudo-diverticula. And this thing, this finding is exceptionally seen in Crohn's and we don't expect this finding to occur in tuberculosis. Why does this occur? If you see it carefully, you can see that Although there is almost concentric involvement, but there are places like this where the bowel wall is preferentially thickened on the mesentric aspect only. And this is the reason why the normal bowel wall is folded in on its surface resulting in a small outpouching just like 
the pleats of a sari that we've talked about and you can even see it here in this diagrammatic representation. So if you find these pseudo diverticula, you know what you're dealing with, you're dealing with Crohn's. So this is again a diagrammatic representation using the help of this pleats of the sari. If you're going to tie the sari on your waist, what you're going to get, you're going to get pleats of sari which represent nothing but overfolding of the, you can say the anti-mesentric aspect of the bobble. So similarly, you can see this small out pouching. You're very sure you're dealing with a pseudo diverticular and if you're dealing with a pseudo diverticular, you're dealing with Crohn's disease. So this is a biopsy proven case of Crohn's disease.